I really appreciate having the opportunity to perhaps expand your idea about networking. Uh, we all know this has been a, uh, an issue, a term that many of you have uh, been involved with over the times of your career. You know how important it is. And uh, you all have a packet, I think, in front of you. And it has a, a cover on it that gives you the title. And if you would all just turn to the first page inside that cover, I'd like to uh, introduce what uh, I think are the uh, important issues of, of this networking idea. And hopefully, if I'm successful in the time I've got, uh, impart some information with you that you have not thought of perhaps before. Expand your view about networking. And the way I'm going to do it is to pretty much stick to this page and, and give you an idea about how these quotations may give you some ideas, uh, additional ideas about how you can use networking to your best advantage. Maybe more than you've ever thought of using networking. I know that some of you uh, are skilled at this, you've been in politics for a long time, others of you are just establishing yourselves in that, uh, aspiring to that role, and uh, yet networking is probably the most critical skill that you can have. And I'm going to make four points about networking, and I'm going to tell you two stories about networking, and that's going to form the 30 minutes that I'm going to spend with you, or now it's going to be less than that. So point number one, and that is that networking is, and then you want me to use this? Networking is, should not be viewed as an event or a moment in time at a meeting, but rather networking really should be viewed as a process that involves you every moment of your day. You are networking when you are in the grocery store, the potential to do this, when you are uh, not only at a meeting, but you <laughs> are in the hall at the water cooler, if you are uh, going to a social event, if you're going to the dentist, any moment in your day is a potential for networking. And as you, if you view it that way, you are automatically going to expand your networking potential by taking the opportunity to engage in building a relationship with the people with whom you meet any given time of the day. And that is really uh, what the goal of networking is, is to build a network uh, or a community a relationship with anyone who you may have influence with or who may be in, uh, in turn influenced by what you have to say, uh, what you're, you stand for, your cause. So that's the first point about networking, that it is an ongoing, everyday, in the moment process. Second point that I want to make is uh, what you see in that first page in the packet. It uh, talks about, uh, there's, you see four quotes on that page. The first quote is, it's not who you know, I mean it's not what you know, but who you know, right? We've heard that many, many times. And that's important, uh, as, as important uh, to know who you can turn to as, as much as what you need to be able to offer. But uh, I'd like to expand on that and look, have you look at this second part of this uh, page, the second quote. It's not who you know, but who knows you that can make the difference in how successful you are in a networking uh, interaction in a networking moment. And let me uh, expand on that by saying that who knows you is really a 
opportunity to establish and distinguish yourself and ex uh, expand your reputation as a, a person who has uh, something to offer the community in a special way is that it is something that you as a uh, potential candidate can stand out apart from all the rest what do you want to be known for and given that who then uh, knows you for that is very critical to your success and um, I'd like to share a story that illustrates that point. About seven or eight years ago, I uh, was working with some clients up in the uh, Sierra foothills, places like Sonora, Jamestown, San Andreas, Groveland. And one of my clients there, uh, I was helping her establish uh, some grant funding for uh, board governance. And in doing that, uh, in the course of that, we developed a very uh, informal and close relationship. And she began to open up to me about her desire to uh, move on to some new career options. And so after hours uh, beyond the paid time that I was spending with her, helping her obtain grant money, uh, I was helping her uh, look at uh, career choices, describing perhaps what she wanted to do in, as her next steps, and um, in a, as a result, uh, we had a, a very clear picture, she had a very clear picture of what she wanted to do next in her work. And a couple of years later, uh, I got a, a, an email from her telling me that she had in fact landed a job in the Bay Area and that the job was very much uh, p having the criteria, a lot of the criteria that she had set forth in those discussions that she and I had together at that time. And so uh, I thought, that's great, you know, I helped her out and I'm very happy about that. Well, fast forward to 2010. I get another email from this same person who says um, she needs me to, if I'm interested, help her develop a program for an organization called California Women Lead. And she wants me to develop a program about networking. And so I said, sure, I could do that. I developed that program for her. I delivered it in San Mateo County, the, that chapter, and as a result, that program is one that I continue to offer uh, a, a version of um, throughout that particular uh, organization throughout Northern California. And here I am tonight doing a little mini version of some of that, uh, some of the ideas that I present in that program. And so, one of the things that I would say that you need to remember with that story and that point is that you never know how your a reputation and what you have to offer, where that is going to show up with people who, with whom you interact on a day-to-day -day basis. And so it's very important for you to establish yourself in, in very specific ways as something that you can, is, that's not me, is it? It's something out there, right? Uh, uh, what is that? Oh, it's a golf uh, ball uh, dispenser, right. I, it's wonderful, I, you know. Drum roll, right. Um, so, you know, that's good karma. That story represents good karma. And what you need to do is find ways where, you know, you're not, the idea isn't, you know, what you can get. But certainly the idea is that through what you give, you can have it returned back to you, all right? What you represent can be returned back to you. Okay, so that's second, the second point. Point number three, that if you look at that first page again, you see a familiar quote, John Kennedy's famous 
ask not what you can do for your country. Ask, ask not what your country can do for you. I'm getting these things all mixed up tonight. But what you can do from your country. If you will take out the R for a moment in his famous speech, what do we have? Ask not what your county can do for you. Ask what you can do for your county. And that is, of course, uh, the uh, essence of uh, being able to uh, provide uh, uh, and make a contribution. And so it goes along with developing the reputation for who you are and what you stand for. But part of that is not just a reputation for what you know or what you stand for or what you say you're all about, but what you're willing to do or contribute. That is the essence of your networking uh, success, uh, the contribution that you potentially have to make. Uh, yesterday, I visited for the first time in years. I hadn't been there in 20-some years. Filoli. Have you ever gone to Filoli? And it's pronounced Filoli. I'd always said Filoli, right? But it's Filoli. What's interesting, and I never knew this about Filoli, Filoli is a made-up name. And Filoli stands for the credo of William Bourne, the first owner of that estate. And it's made up of three uh, parts of three words. The phi is made up of his belief that you have to fight for a just cause. That's the phi, fight for a just cause. The low stands for love your fellow man. That was the second part of his credo. And Li stands for live a good life. Phi Loli. What is your credo? What do you stand for? And what can you then, in the everyday uh, connection that you make, how can you deliver that message to those with whom you come in contact? Uh, if you can say in a very, and you've all heard this in your trainings about the elevator talk, you know, what you do in 30 seconds and the time that it takes you to go from, what, the 50th floor down to the ground floor. Uh, let's expand on that and make what you represent and who you are uh, so powerful by using your what you believe in, what your credo is, uh, to help introduce you to the people with whom you network and come in contact with every day. So think about that uh, as a, uh, a plan that you might uh, want to involve yourself with. So second story. My husband of a little over five years now, Wendell Williams, maybe some of you recognize that name, ran for U.S. Congress. He ran for California State Assembly and also was the VP for the Democratic League under Robert Burton in San Francisco. And he's always been involved in politics one way or another. But he got his initial uh, entry point into politics when he was a student at the University of Texas. And what he did was write a letter to then Texas Senator uh, Ralph Yarborough. And Wendell was a recent re veteran who had no ability to get his education and a lot of his other uh, uh, colleagues, a lot of his other classmates, did also not have the ability to get a GI Bill funded education because they did not 
uh, serve in wartime. And so he wrote a letter to Senator Yarborough saying, you know, I think we need to have a Cold War GI Bill. And would you, would you entertain that? And could you uh, sponsor that? And much to his shock, Senator Yarborough's office called him upon receiving that letter and asked Wendell to get together for lunch. Oh, of course. And so Wendell talked with Yarborough about that possibility. Yarborough then sponsored such a bill, and in the mid-60s, such a bill was passed, the first Cold War GI Bill. And so Wendell's always likely to say that, you know, uh, be careful, you may not, to others who are not uh, of, of this persuasion in this crowd, but many people say, well, I don't like politics. But he says, well, you can't help sometimes. Even if you don't like politics, politics may like you, because that may be the only way that you can get something done. And so uh, Wendell uh, helped Yarborough get that bill passed, not just by writing that letter, but by um, getting uh, signatures on petitions, getting his classmates to volunteer their time, and so basically uh, was uh, a community organizer uh, around that uh, issue. So, story number two. So, finally, point number four, and we're down to that last quote on that first page, and that is, adopt the slow food movement approach to making and keeping important con uh, connections. Well, what in the world? Well, here's what the slow food movement, in case you hadn't remembered all of the, their particular uh, criteria for it being part of that. Number one, you buy local uh, food produced locally, not shipped in. And what that says to us uh, as networkers uh, in translating it over to the networking arena is build your network with people that who know you already, okay, and can pave the way to introducing you to people you've yet to meet. So this approach is kind of like that uh, old point that we always used to talk about in career development where we'd say, who are your live 25? Uh, who are the people who you know in the community who uh, you uh, network with all the time, but who may not know what your current intentions are and who may not also know the passion with which you have in aspiring to the office that you're seeking. And so start with the people who know you and develop that uh, pitch, if you will, develop that uh, energy and that powerful message with those people and then let them help find new people for you to interact with and to, to uh, hear your message. So. Uh, it's, it's really uh, thinking, again, like we've heard, globally, but acting locally with those who know you that paves the way then for new connections. S two, the second part of the slow food movement approach say, says support the local economy, all right? So that translates for the networker as sell yourself on how you will support local growth, whether it's in business or jobs or other causes. In other words, what is the selling point for why they should vote for you? What's in it for them? Uh, how are you going to improve the economics of Marin County or the state of California through your candidacy? All right. And then third, the, the last point that the slow food movement states is uh, make that food natural 
and healthy and not processed. Well, what does that have to do with you as networkers? Well, what that says to me is the first law of being a leader is to be authentic, to be honest and true and consistent and say and do what you're going to, what you say you're going to do with uh, honesty and in, with truth. Uh, authenticity is uh, something that you can't uh, fake. It's something that uh, is the uh, kind of like the core of, of who you are. And if you, we, we see candidates even now in this, these primary uh, elections uh, who change <laughs> their vo viewpoint almost daily. And we see what trouble that gets them in, in being believable. And, and so we're talking about authenticity. So the slow movement <coughs> approach to uh, uh, networking uh, the aftermath or the goal of that is to have a bon appetit as a result. So if I had you for the two-hour session that I wished I could, I would have you start networking right this minute in applying some of the approaches that I have suggested uh, by uh, having you uh, develop a strong message around what you believe in, your credo, by having you uh, share uh, your specialness with those around you and with those who we have here in this room. And uh, uh, the only other thing that I would have you do, uh, which I hope and in, uh, encourage you to do, like anything that we want to achieve, if you want to have, be successful as a networker, you need to plan it. You need to develop a plan, an individual networking plan for uh, setting out what you want to accomplish by all of your networking efforts. This packet that I've provided you is uh, five or six pages of information that may stimulate you to think about a plan for your next uh, opportunity, which should be at any moment here in, in networking. So good luck, and thank you again for letting me share this information with you.